So what does Starbucks do? Let's try and figure out how forward contracts and futures work using Starbucks as an example. Now quickly before we get into it, I'm not going to get into the real depth of the definition and all because the idea is that if you understand this example and then you read the definition, it should make complete sense to you. So let's get into it. Let's assume that Starbucks sells a coffee to you at around 300 rupees. Okay. Now to make that coffee, they have to import coffee beans and let's say those coffee beans assumption say are 50 rupees per cup. And the other cost of making the coffee is another 150. So the total cost is 200 and accordingly the profit that Starbucks makes is 100 rupees. Now, this was pre-Corona. Assume Corona hit and the price of the coffee beans increased. So assume everything is the same for Starbucks. After the virus hit, they sell it at 300. The coffee beans are example at 75 rupees which is increased. The rest of the cost is the same. So now their profit is coming down to 75. It went from 100 to 75 because of the price of coffee beans increasing. Right. Now Starbucks is thinking that we don't want to compromise on our profits because of the price of the coffee beans increasing. So what does Starbucks do? They enter into a forward contract with farmers. So what do they do? They go to the farmers and they tell the farmers that listen, at the beginning of the coronavirus, they'll tell them that, listen, the price is 50. We want to keep it at 50 for the entirety of 2020. We don't know whether the price is going to go up. It's going to go down because if the price of the coffee beans go up, Starbucks will lose profit. But if the price goes down, Starbucks can increase profit. Starbucks says, I don't want to increase or decrease. I want it fixed at 50 rupees. And they talk to the farmers and the farmers accept. What is the, the farmers have accepted to enter into a contract that says that they will keep a fixed price in the future. That's it. That's all you need to know. So now, assume 2020 actually uh, went the way we discussed that the price of the coffee beans went up to 75. But for Starbucks, it's still the same. 300, the price at which they sell us, 200 is the total cost out of which 50 is the coffee bean and they've kept their margin at 100 rupees. This is a forward contract. So this was an example of how Starbucks used or entered into a forward contract to basically do what? They didn't want to reduce their profit. Which means essentially they didn't want to, they, they wanted to protect themselves from any loss. When you want, when you want to protect yourself from any loss or any risk, it's called hedging. So Starbucks has entered into forward contracts for hedging purposes. And before I get into the next part, uh, futures and forwards are taught in depth in the CFA course. If you'd like to know more about CFA, you can click on the link below. And now let me explain you the second reason why people enter into a forward or a futures contract. And that is speculation. As the term defines, speculation means I'm guessing what's going to happen to the price. And that means that there is either a high chance I'll make a lot of money or a high chance I'll lose a lot of money. Right? Now let me explain you using the same coffee beans example. First of all, for this, I don't have to be in the coffee business, right? What am I saying? Like I realize that, okay, I know that the price of the coffee is 50 rupees. And the coronavirus hit. Now, I, in my mind, I feel the price of the coffee beans is going to go up. So what do I do? I enter into a forward contract and say that, okay, I am going to purchase these coffee beans at 50 rupees in the few, at a future date. So when the future date comes, let's assume I can buy it at 50. But the price in the market is assuming 75. So what happens is I can buy it at 50 and I can sell it at 75. So I make a 25 rupee profit without doing anything as long as my speculation pays off. I decided that I'm going to buy it at 50. I keep it with me at 50 when the, when, uh, at the future date. And when the market rate is higher, I'll be able to sell it off. That's the easy way to make money. Similarly, if I buy it at 50 and unfortunately the price falls, right, let's say it falls to 20 rupees, I will have to then you know, buy it at 50, sell it at 20 and make a loss of 30. You multiply either of these sides by lakhs or crores. That's what people do in the speculation world. And that's how much money people either make or lose. So if you would understand what it means, it's essentially fixing a price to buy something at a future date. Or for the other party, a price to sell something at a future date. That's what a forward and a future means. Now, what is the difference between a forward and a future? It's a simple one point difference. A forward contract you and I can get into and it can be really customized between our needs. Whereas future contracts are listed on the stock markets. 
right? Which means I can actually buy and sell futures through BSC and NSC. Whereas a forward contract, I need to most likely meet the person who is going, who I'm going to enter into the contract with. Another important point about uh, future and forwards uh, is the delivery. Now, in this example of coffee beans, right? When I said Starbucks stock spoke to the farmer, fixed a price at 50 for a future date. In the future, Starbucks paid 50 rupees to the farmers and took the coffee beans. That's called delivery. Doesn't mean that for every contract there has to be delivery. Like I said in the next example of speculation, that I just decided to fix the price for coffee beans at 50 for speculation purposes. And in the future, when the time comes and the market price is higher, I'm just going to sell it. I don't need to buy the coffee and then sell the coffee. I just need to sell the contract. That is basically when it's called unrealized gain. So this is the way that we prefer teaching. We would have preferred learning actually, rather than the technical definition and, you know, uh, going breaking down the definition into those technical jargons or underlying assets and strike prices and things like that. As long as you understood this example that you buy something at a fixed price for a future date, right? You buy it and then you use it in the future. If you can understand that aspect, when you read the definition yourself, you'll be able to break this down. So with that being said, guys, uh, I hope that this video helped you a little bit. If it did, please do let us know in the comments. And we have many more videos where we explain different, different either financial jargons or about financial courses to help you in your academic journey as well as your career. So guys, wait, before you leave, I'm going to leave you all with the same old. Do you know what the difference between you and a successful version of you is? The successful version of you would not miss out on subscribing to this channel today.